The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said, What are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, which is translated teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. The curtain rises this morning. Some 3,000 years ago, on a woman who is weeping, she is Hannah, one of the wives of Elkanah. And she is crying because she has been unsuccessful in her attempt to give Elkanah a child, a son. And there she is, weeping at the portal of the synagogue in Shiloh, so copiously that Eli, the priest, thinks maybe she is drunk. But she is not. She is simply very sad. And she makes a promise to the Lord that if she is able to produce a child. She will dedicate it to the service of God. Twelve years later, an 11-year-old child is sleeping in the synagogue of Shiloh and hears a voice. At first, he thinks that Eli is calling to him but finally recognizes that it is the voice of the Lord. And he, like his mother 12 years earlier, reaches a turning point in his life, what we might call a liminal moment, limina for threshold in Latin, a liminal point after which nothing will ever be quite the same. At that young age, Samuel takes upon himself the mantle of the last judge of Israel, a judge who was a combination of priest, prophet, and mighty leader. He would come to rule the armies of Israel against the Philistines. Samuel reminds me of so many of the young people in our parish who I see each week at our parish school of religion and junior youth ministry who have demonstrated such strength, courage, and character in this time of pandemic, rolling with the punches and really taking upon themselves the mantle that has been thrust to them 
in a sense, by destiny, that they, like their parents and grandparents, will traverse through this challenging time. And like Hannah and Samuel, never quite be the same again. In our gospel reading today, we see a portrait which consists of many liminal points. For John the Baptist, he stands at the end, the culmination of the first covenant. For although we read about him in the fourth gospel of the New Testament, he actually is a figure of the old, as he, like Samuel, who was a transition between the time of the judges and the time of the kings, serves as a transition between the time of the old and the new. It is he who recognizes Jesus as the Messiah, as the Lamb of God, the great turning point of our Judeo-Christian heritage. For Jesus, it is a moment of transition as he moves from his somewhat private life to the public phase of his mission and ministry, which we might see as the gospel adventure of Jesus. And then, of course, for the disciples, for Andrew and for the unnamed disciple, who some believe is the very author of the gospel according to John, the author being so humble he does not wish to name himself, or because he wishes that each of us, in hearing that gospel proclaimed, might put ourselves in his place, so that we too might experience our own liminal moment, a threshold that we cross after which nothing will ever be the same. We think of these rites of passage in our lives as being relatively few. For instance, our baptism, our first communion, our first love, our first kiss, our first heartbreak, our marriage, a loss. But the fact of the matter is any day, any moment might be a liminal moment if we might hear the voice of Jesus saying, come and see, as he did to those disciples, and we give our assent to come and see where our hope is. Come and see how we can be hope for others. In a sense, you could say that our country is at a turning point And what will historians write about 100 years from now? It's really impossible to know. We know that history, by and large, is written by the winners. So who knows how everything will shake out. But we all have a choice to play our own part. Once again, by seeing where the hope lies, by being light and being signs of light and hope for others, as we are called to do by our baptismal covenant, to recognize and rededicate ourselves to the dignity of every human person. In a sense, that is at the heart of Paul's message to us today, as he wrote to the people of Corinth, to rededicate ourselves to the dignity of every human person, to repent of the immorality which is a degradation of human beings through poverty, hunger, exploitation, and the like, and to rededicate ourselves to the continual turning around, seeing every step we take as a liminal moment a time to build up hope, light, and dignity everywhere we go. That 
is where Jesus invites us as he says to each and every one of us, come and you will see.